Hello, grade 10. We will take the last chapter in our syllabus today, which is the radio activity. Today, inshallah, we will find out what is the background and artificial radiation, how radiation is detected, what is the nature of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, and what about the nuclear equations that represents decay, and what is the radiation behaves in electric and magnetic field, ionization and penetration of the radiation, and how can we calculate the radioactive half-life, and how radioactive substances are used. We have to know what is the meaning of radiation and radioactive substance and what, what is the meaning of radioactive decay. At first, what is the meaning of radiation? Radiation means energy spreading out from a source which carried by a particles or waves. Okay, this is the radiation. What is the meaning of radioactive substance? Radioactive substance, it is a substance which decay by emitting radiation. From what? From its atomic nuclei. What about the radioactive decay? What is the meaning of decay? Decay means emit radiation from its atomic nuclei. Okay, when the substance emit radiation from its atomic nuclei, this is the decay or this is the radioactive decay. Background radiation. What is the meaning of background radiation? Background radiation means a measure of the level of the ionizing radiation which is present in the environment from the radiation sources. Okay, so we can divide the background radiation here into two types. The first one, it is the natural radiation and the second one, it is the artificial radiation. What about the natural radiation? It represents for about 87%. So 87% is from the natural radiation sources. So the rest of the 100%, which is 13%, is the artificial radiation. The natural radiation, which is 87%, represents in ground and building 14%, radon in the atmospheric 51%, and food and drink for about 12%, and cosmic rays for about 10%. What about the artificial sources which represent 13%? It is divided into medical 12%, weapons tests 0.4%, air travel, TV sets, and so on, 0.4%, at work, 0.2%, and the nuclear discharges for about less than 0.1%. Background radiation. What is the meaning of background radiation? Background radiation, it is a measure of the level of ionizing radiation present in the environment from the radiation sources. So background radiation means a measure of the level of ionizing radiation in the environment from the radiation sources. So we can divide the background radiation sources into two types. The first one, it is the natural radiation. And the second one, it is the artificial radiation. Natural radiation represents 87%. And the rest of 100% is in the artificial radiation, which is 13%. Natural radiation, which is 87%, represents 14% in the ground buildings and the buildings, radon in the atmosphere for about 51%, and food and drink 12%, and cosmic rays 10%. What about the 13% of the artificial radiation? It is divided into medical 12%, fall out from the weapons tests 0.4%, air travel TV sets 
for about 0.4%, at work 0.2%, and less than 0.1% in the nuclear discharges. Safe handling. What is the meaning of safe handling? These figures explain how radioactive materials can be handled safely. Why? Because any radioactive materials produce radiation and contaminations. So we have to avoid this radiation or the contaminations. How can we avoid it? First, we have to use a storage box for radioactive sources to store them and we have to use tongues to hold them and not be direct contact with these sources and during any experiment we should stand at a safe distance from the sources we have three types of radiations which emitted by the unstable nucleus to become more stable such as alpha radiation and beta radiation and gamma radiation. What is, the, what is the difference between the three types of radiation here? Alpha, beta and gamma. Uh, we have to know its sample, its mass, its charge and the speed and how can we stop them and what about its penetrating power and ionizing ability for each one at first alpha we can write it as alpha or alpha 24 or helium 24 what about beta particle beta we can write it as beta or beta minus and what about gamma gamma we can write it as gamma without any any charge okay what about the mass of alpha its mass is four mass number and its charge is plus two its speed is slow very slow its ionizing ability very high and penetrating power is low and we can stop this alpha particle by paper what about beta? Beta, its mass is 1 over 2,000 and it carries charge negative 1. It's very fast and ionizing ability for it is medium as the penetrating power and we can stop it by the aluminium sheet and for the gamma particle or the gamma ray its mass is zero, it hasn't any charge or mass, and its speed very, very fast at the speed of light. So the speed of gamma equals the speed of light, and its ionizing ability is zero, and penetrating power is very high, and we can stop it by a sheet of lead. Radioactive decay equations. We can represent any decay by equation. Radioactive decay, we have three types, alpha, beta, and gamma decay. We can obtain alpha from decay of uranium-235. When the uranium-235 decay, it will give the thorium plus the helium. Pay attention that the atomic number and the mass number before the decay, the same as after the decay. 
okay for example here 235 it is the atomic mass before the decay and after the decay it will be 231 for the thorium plus 4 for the helium so 231 plus 4 it will be the same as 235 before the decay and the atomic number for the uranium before the decay is 92 equal after the decay which is 90 plus 2 for the helium type of radioactive decay is beta decay we can obtain it from decay of carbon 14 carbon 14 can decay into nitrogen 14 plus beta pay attention that beta it is a negative charge has an effective atomic number of minus one as the electron so its symbol is e negative one and zero its mass number is zero and its atomic number is negative one we can write it as e or beta so pay attention that the mass number and the atomic number before and after the decay are the same for example here carbon its mass number is 14 this is before the decay and after the decay it will be 14 for the nitrogen plus zero for the beta so it will be the same 14 before and 14 after what about its atomic number its atomic number before the decay for the nitrogen is six and after the decay it will be seven for the nitrogen and negative one for the beta seven plus minus one equals six so they are the same atomic number before and after the decay type of the radioactive decay is the gamma decay gamma gamma radiation it is a high energy electromagnetic waves as we know and it is very dangerous and very penetrating the equation below here represents the decay of polonium nucleus which form when it decay lead nucleus and alpha will emit it so complete this equation here po the polonium 210 it will give you pp which is lead 206 plus uh, plus what plus energy he told you that it will emit alpha so we have to write here alpha alpha means alpha two four or helium atom which is he two and four and then calculate the mass number and the atomic number for both sides here before the decay it will be the mass number 210 and after the decay it will be 206 plus four for the helium 206 plus 4 it will be the same as the polonium 210 Time. what about the the atomic number atomic number for the polonium is 84 and after after its decay it will be lead 82 plus helium which is 2 82 plus 2 it will be 84 so they are the same How can radiation be detected? We can detect the radiation by using instruments such as Geiger Miller tube. So we can detect and measure the radiation by this device. And also we can detect the radioactivity by using the photographic film, which darkness when the radiation struck it. How ionization happens? We have to know what is the meaning of ionization, what is the ionization radiation, and what is the irradiated. 
First, what is the meaning of ionization? Ionization means any atom or molecule or a particle in general lose or gain electrons, it will take a charge on it, positive or negative. It is ionization, okay? What about irradiated? Any object exposed to a radiation, it will be irradiated. What is the meaning of ionization radiation? This is this is a radiation, okay? Ionization radiation, it is a radiation which come from any radioactive substance when it decay. Deflecting radiation. To know the difference between the three types of radiation behave, alpha, beta, and gamma, we use the electric and magnetic field. One method is to see how they behave in the electric and magnetic field. As we know, alpha and beta have an opposite have an opposite charges. Okay, so they will deflect in opposite direction when they pass through the electric field. Alpha particle carry positive charge, so they are attracted towards the negative charged plate, while beta particles carries negative charges so they are attracted towards the positive charged plate and the gamma rays are not deflected because they are not charged the direction in which the particles are deflected in the magnetic field can be predicted using the filming left hand rule In this figure A and B, alpha and beta radiations are deflected in opposite directions in the electric field and in the magnetic field. What is the meaning of radioactive decay? Radioactive decay, it is a decay of the radioactive substance when its atomic nuclei emit radiation. The meaning of half life and what is the radio isotopes? Half life it is the average time which taken for half the atoms in a center of a radioactive material to decay. What about the radio isotopes? Radio isotopes it is a radioactive isotopes of an element. Explaining half life. To explain the half life, we will get an original substance or a radioactive sample which contains number of atoms. When it starts to decay in the first decay or the second decay or the third decay and so on, its atoms will be half for each step of the decays. Okay? For example, in the first decay here, its atoms will be half its number. So, half of it will decay and the other half will not decay. For example, if we have here 100 atoms in the original substance, in the first decay or the radioactive decay, which is called the one half life, the 100, it will be 50 decay and the other 50 will not decay. And then in the, the second decay, in the second decay, which is called the two half life, we have here 50 undecay atom, okay? 50 undecay atoms, it will decay half of it. So it will be 25 will decay and the remaining 25, the other 25 will not decay. So from 100, it will be 50 at the first decay, and then it will be 25 at the second decay, and in the third decay, it will be 12, and so on. What about the SI unit of the activity? It is PQRL, PQ. One PQ, PQRL, equals one decay per second.
This is a decay graph for a radioactive substance which consists of 20 atoms. This curve of this shape is known as exponential decay graph or a steep graph, okay, which show that a substance has a short half life. For example, in this substance, it has or it have 20 atoms. In the first decay, it will be 10 and then it will be 5 in the second decay or the second half life and then it will be 2.5 at the third half life. Let's go and take an example. A symbol of a radioactive element X has an activity 240 picquarels. If the half life of X is 3 years, what will its activity after 12 years? So we want the activity of this symbol after 12 years. How can we get the number of half lives in the 12 years? We have to divide the 12 years divided 3. So the half lives here, it will be 12 divided 3, 4 half lives. So we have to get the four half lives of this symbol, which have 240 picquarels its activity, initial activity. To calculate the first and the second and the third and the fourth life, half lives of this radioactive element, for each half life, we have to divide it, its activity divided two. If the initial activity here is 240 picquarels, so the first activity or the first half life, it will be the half of 240, so it will be 120 picquarels. The second half life, it will be the half of 120, so it will be 60 picquarels. The third half life, it will be the half of the second half life, so it will be the 30 picquarels. The fourth, it will be 15 picquarels. Here in this example, the activity of the symbol has fallen to 15 picquarels from 240 picquarels after 12 years. Measuring a half life. How can we measure the half life? In this figure, the first figure, show how the half-life of a substance such as a protactinium-234 is measured in the lake. After the bottle has been checked, the upper layer of the liquid which contains the protactinium, which emit beta radiation, decays because its half-life is 70 seconds and the count rate decreases quickly. So the number of the count in the interval of 10 seconds recorded. And we can graph a plot of the number of counts in each interval against the time in the second graph or the second figure. So the half-life can then be used from the decay graph. The uses of radioisotopes. Radioisotopes at work uses in four separate groups according to what? According to one, penetrating powers, two, the damage of living cells, three, radioactive decay and half-life, four, detect tiny quantities of radioactive substance. Uses of radioisotopes. First, the uses which related to the penetrating powers is the smoke detectors. This figure show how it will work. Smoke detector. How it will work. First, we choose here the radioactive material, which is the americium-241 as a source of alpha radiation. At first, when the radiation from the source falls on the detector, alpha radiation is charged. 
and a small current flow in the detector. And the circuit here is off, so the alarm is silent. Second, when the smoke enters the gap between the source and the detector, okay, it will absorb all the alpha radiation and the current flow and the circuit will switch it on and sounding the alarm. The second use switch related to the penetrating power is the thickness measurement. In industry, we use beta radiation because it's very suitable. Why? Why alpha and gamma is not suitable? Alpha is not suitable because it absorbed by the paper very easy or the plastic sheeting. And what about the gamma? It's very hard and it is the most penetrating, so it's not suitable for the thickness measurement as the beta radiation. uses which related to the penetrating power is the medical diagnosis. As we know that some diseases may be carried out by using a source of gamma radiation. By inject the patient with a radioactive chemical that target to the problem such as the bones and gives an image of this tissue. The force uses which relate to the penetrating power is the fault detection. Engineers are looking for any fault in some pipe work. How? By using a radioactive source of gamma ray, by placing it inside the pipe work and put a photographic film outside this pipe. When the film is developed, it gives X-ray picture which show any fault in the welding of the pipe work. Use this which related to cell damage. First one, it is radiation therapy. Second one, it is food irradiation. Third one, it is sterilization. What is the meaning of the three uses, which is radiation therapy and food irradiation and sterilization? First one, it is radiation therapy. Patient is receiving gamma or X-ray radiation to treat cancer and kill the cancerous cell by, uh, by receiving gamma or X-ray radiation. What about the second use, which is food irradiation? Food irradiation it is a way of preserving food. By decay or the food here will decays because of the microbes all the food decays because of the microbes so when we exposed the food by gamma rays it will kill any microbes the third use is sterilization sterilizations by putting the medical products in a plastic bags and exposed to a gamma radiation so any microbes present are killed which related to detectability. The first one, it is radioactive tracing, and the second one, it is genetic fingerprinting and radioactive labeling. Uses which related to the radioactive decay. The first one, half life and radiocarbon dating, and the second one, it is other radioactive dating techniques. First, half life and radiocarbon dating. We use it to discover how old objects and materials are. All the living organisms contain carbon-14. So the idea behind this, when the living things dies, the carbon-14 in its body decays and the amount will decrease. So when we measure the amount of the decrease of carbon-14, we can discover how old objects or materials are. We have two ways to measure the amount of carbon-14. The first one by Geiger counter and the second one by the spectrometer by counting the number of carbon-14 atoms. The second use here which related to the radioactive decay is other radioactive dating techniques. Geologists here 
used to find the edge of some rocks. How? Many rocks here contain the isotopes, the radioactive isotopes, which is potassium-40. When they decay by beta emission, they decay to a stable isotopes, which is argon. Okay, so we take a sample of a rock and measure the amount of argon in it. If the amount of argon is greater, okay, so the rock is old. So the greater amount of argon, the older rock must be.